Early Castor Valley began as a large ranch owned by the town's namesake, Don Guillermo Castro. Sprawling with cattle, sheep, and horses, the native landscape was sparse with few trees. This rare footage by Bill Ralph, a Castor Valley home builder and member of the Hayward Photography Club, was filmed in the 1930s. We start by seeing Bill preparing the plans for his house. Everything was drafted by hand, as drawing plans with computers wouldn't happen for another 60 years. Bill Ralph built the family home on Forest Avenue, located where Burdina Avenue would eventually dead end. Most of these shots are from that perspective. The house is still there today. Notice the numerous dirt roads, years before any paving. With no sewer or water service, residents had to drill a well for water and hand dig themselves a septic system. But eventually the water came, which started the first boom in home building. Where large chicken ranches and orchards once stood, new homes were going up in their place. What a great time to be a builder. All that land and now a dependable water supply. Residents no longer had to worry about their wells going dry. Here we see work hands unloading a load of lumber for the home. Bill believes this home was built on Sargent Avenue off Center Street. Some of the next shots are from that perspective. Again, notice there are only dirt roads and nothing is paved. Most of the work was done without power tools, and young children like this boy and his dog would often accompany the family to work. Not much different from how we do it today, workers lifted newly framed walls into place. The next film was captured by the Castor Valley Fire Department in the 1940s to survey the potential growth possibilities of Castor Valley and their concern for protecting the area. These colored movies are a real gem. The first shot is taken from where Lake Chabot Road dead ends into the boulevard, looking west. Many of the buildings remain, including the original Safeway store, now a liquor store, and the old, original fire station, where Jerry Unser Sr. was the first fire chief. Lake Chabot Road was just a two-lane road heading to the lake, and the Union 76 gas station was located where Starbucks is now. Another look at Old Town near Pete's and Dell's. You get a great look at the old stores. These shots of the old town are fabulous. And a wonderful shot of Safeway and the firehouse. Again, notice the road is only two lanes. Here's a superb shot of the infamous drive-in hamburger stand and the double A food mart. Another perspective of the road looking west. Now you get to see our firefighters in action. Coming out of the old firehouse in the old red fire truck and heading east to a fire. Here is a shot of them coming. Then another fire truck makes its way along with one of the volunteer firemen carrying a ladder. A caravan of firefighters speeding to the fire, probably to put out one of the many fires started in the chicken brooding coops. Up Anita Avenue. We then ascend into the air starting at the west side of Castor Valley at Stanton Avenue. Lake Chabot Road had not yet been widened, as you can still see the firehouse next to the original Safeway. As you look at the buildings, you might notice a few of the chicken brooding houses that Castor Valley was once famous for. Approaching Anita Avenue, you can see an old gas station where Chevron is now located, and then the beautiful Castor Valley Grammar School, with this adobe building you're sitting in now in the back. Flying towards Redwood Road from Grove Way, we see the first new tracks of homes going in. The school you see here was called Baywood and is now the location of the Baywood Retirement Home. This was about 1946 and the baby boom had just begun. 
people from all over came to California to look for work and to buy their first home. This is Redwood Road looking back up to Castro Valley. Tracks of houses all with lush green lawns surrounded by the old homesteads and chicken coops. Another view of the tracks of homes looking back to where we just started near Baywood School. Now we come across Castro Valley from east to west where Redwood Road crosses the boulevard, examining where the new freeway will be built. As we pan toward the hills, you can see where Somerset Avenue goes up and over to San Leandro. The next set of films are from the 1950s by Jim Toller, owner of the Chabot Theater. Inside the theater, the concession stand hasn't changed a bit. The matinees were very popular with the kids, and there was always a double feature. Here's a series of young ladies competing for the Maid of Castro Valley, accompanied by their business sponsors. Our first sponsor, Maggie's Dance Studio on San Carlos Avenue. Located on the corner of Castro Valley Boulevard in Santa Maria was the Shell Gas Station, which is where Citibank is now located. A very popular restaurant, Castro Gardens, was located where the Chase Bank is now across from Safeway. This was the meeting place for the Rotary Club of Castro Valley. Pioneer Market on the corner of Redwood and Wilson was situated where Bond Fair Market is now, across the street from Redwood Grade School. Thompson Cabinets was on Seaview Avenue. The family business is still around, owned by Gary Thompson. Dancing lessons were just as popular as they are now. Here is the owner of the Castro Valley School of Dancing. You might even take note that back in the 50s, most business owners wore suits and ties every day. Mortensons was a carpet business located in a small shopping center next to the popular Purity Market, where the Boulevard Chevron is currently established. This shot appears to be a jewelry store in the newly built Castro Village, followed by another store in the village, Max Produce. You may recognize the round posts here with ivy growing up them. A much-loved restaurant in the village was Don's Patio, serving home-style food. Coon Rats was a local favorite of baby boomers growing up. A true five-and-dime store, this is where Don Jose's now resides. Moving homes was big business, and homes were trucked in to Castro Valley from outside the area. Some buildings came from the military facility Camp Parks in Dublin. With population rising, various sites around Castro Valley became popular attractions. Willow Park Golf Course opened in the early 60s to much fanfare, as many celebrities of that era came to its popular golf tournaments. The new Castro Valley High School had two state-of-the-art pools, which were used for swim meets, diving practice, swim lessons, and summer fun for all residents. Coal Canyon Dam was developed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to help with flood control and water conservation. Check out the open land where Canyon Middle School now sits. A beautiful new hospital, named Eden, was built to service the growing population. Now let's take a ride down the boulevard and see what we recognize. We start at the corner of Redwood Road, where the new Safeway was just built, out of sight on the right. Then a liquor store and a couple of laundromats. The concrete building on the right would become a bank. Great Western Bank is still there. Passing the center of the town, by the Castro Village, there is a Shell gas station on the corner of Santa Maria. The popular hamburger shop, Chuckles, was located where the Starbucks parking is now. You might recognize this building. Once the AA Food Mart, it is now home of Dana's Party Planet. 
you get a quick glimpse of Winchell's. Purity Market was built on the demolished Castor Valley Grammar School site. It is currently occupied by a new shopping center with the Little Caesars and Subway. This trailer park and the next couple of buildings are still there. Now we head the opposite direction from the older part of town. That's the original Pete's Hardware, quickly followed by Dell Cafe. Notice the large potholes filled with water after the rain. Sidewalks had yet to come to this area. Streets and parking were a real mess. There were many real estate offices, several car sales locations, and numerous radio stores. The original Frank's Garage later moved to Lake Chabot Road, and then our landmark theater. Up next is the original Daughtry's building, which is now occupied by direct sales floors, followed by another grocery store, Hagstrom's. This building is still around with Lucas Deli in the same location and another car dealership. Lou Frank Real Estate was well known back then. The location is now home to Intero Real Estate. Now we come up on where the Ice Creamery building now stands. The big donut entrance is delicious. Jack's Mac Gas Station building on the corner of Wilbean is still there. It is currently a dry cleaners. Coming up is the Castro Gardens restaurant, followed by Ruby's Drugs, now Raoul's Saddlery, then Duffy's Cocktails, now Crayons. The Red Barn Furniture Store sat on the corner of Redwood Road. With the boom in housing, the downtown area was due for an upgrade. So a plan was devised to construct a new road with much needed sidewalk improvements and parking spaces. Here we see some of our civic leaders discussing the plans. The man in the glasses is Arnold Anderson, who was involved in many Castro Valley improvements. It was his vision that ultimately became Castro Village here he is going over the new improved plans for the boulevard. We quickly jump ahead about 10 years to the 60s with all new sidewalks in place. Notice the new bank and then the village. Many of the same businesses were still there, but now enhanced with the new road and sidewalks. The hills in the background are all still familiar, even if they now have homes on them. Everyone loved getting Winchell's Donuts for a dime. Continuing to travel westward, you still might recognize many of the same buildings. The theater is always a landmark location. Residents were proud of all the improvements, and our new town shined bright. The Richfield Station is now in Arco. As we jump past Lake Chabot Road, we come up on Old Town, the last of the turning lanes constructed on the newly widened Castor Valley Boulevard. After the boulevard construction was finished, the Castor Valley Parade became a cherished annual event, now known as the Raul Ranch Rodeo Parade. Everyone in town participated, including U.S. Army, complete with Nike missiles to protect Castro Valley. The 4-H Club. The Chamber of Commerce. The Rao Ranch Rodeo. Castro Village. The Fire Department. Hills Park Forest. The pride of our town, this annual parade continues today as a beloved tradition for all.